gotcha. Happy Halloween. Hey guys, I hope you're well. I hope I didn't scare you too much there because that was pretty, pretty scary, right? Am I right? It's Halloween! Ooh. I love Halloween. I like carving pumpkins. I like watching kind of cozy Halloween-y style films. So I'm not really big into scary ones, but I quite like things like The Addams Family, Practical Magic. Um, I could quite happily sit and watch Sabrina the Teenage Witch back to back. So like most people on Halloween, I will be carving out a pumpkin. Not a turnip, which is something that we carved out as kids growing up because I think pumpkins just weren't as readily available and my mum grew up carving out turnips, so it was a thing. I mean, there's nothing like spending a solid three hours carving a very, very, very dense root vegetable into a tiny, tiny scary face. It's great memories. Good times. So my childhood memories might be slightly different to everyone else's, but I fully embraced the pumpkin because it's a heck of a lot easier to carve compared to a turnip. And it just looks a lot better as well, let's face it. And I really like that with a pumpkin, because it's so much bigger and quite versatile, you can do so much with it. So you can make pumpkin pie, you can make pumpkin soup, you can make snacks out of seeds. You can't do that with a turnip. I'll tell you that now. I'm gonna be carving out a pumpkin on All Hallows Eve, uh, a bit like this one. Oh my gosh, it's so heavy. Ugh. Look at that beast. Organic, y'all. So like most people, I will be carving a pumpkin this Halloween. I love it. It's part of my Halloween routine. How many Halloween routine videos are there out there? Probably not enough. Maybe I should do one. In the UK alone, we weigh something like 18,000 tons of pumpkin each Halloween, which is crazy. And a lot of that could be used for pumpkin pie. To be fair, I feel like I've got half of that weight in this pumpkin alone because it is very heavy. That's around the equivalent of 20 million portions of pumpkin pie, guys. That's pumpkin pie that's not being eaten, and I won't stand for it. I won't. So I'm going to show you a couple of the things that I want to do with my pumpkin once I've carved it. My goodness me, this is so heavy. Before you've even started carving it, you could use this as a weight for your workout. Pumpkin. Everybody's new gym buddy. Jeepers. Creepers. That's heavy. Whew. Oh my goodness, I'm feeling pumped. Pumped? Pumpkin? But here are just some of the things that I'm gonna do with my pumpkin. Flesh, seeds, and everything in between. All right guys, so I'm starting off by carving a scary face into my pumpkin. Uh, there I am doing the hat, and whoa, can we just, what the? And then I got a spoon to gouge out the insides. I'm just using a bowl to collect all of the seeds and the stringy bits and also the flesh as well. So I'm using a knife to cut out as much of the flesh as possible. And I'm hacking away at the hat because there's some flesh there too. Now because I want to try and get as much flesh out of my pumpkin as possible, I decided to go for quite a big features on my jack-o'-lantern and I cut out some stars at the back as well just to give me a bit of extra flesh too and then I cut them up into smaller pieces and trimmed off the skin but I saved the skin because I'm going to use that later or at least try to and just to make sure I had enough pumpkin flesh I carved out this little guy too and then I separated them into different bowls so I've got the stringy bits there and then the seeds I've washed those and then I've got the flesh in another bowl as well all right, let's start with the pumpkin seeds. I just sprinkled these onto a roasting tin and then added a few chunks of butter. You could use coconut oil, I just really like butter. A sprinkle of salt. Those chilies are super hot, so I just used one and then I popped the seeds in the oven and kept an eye on them until they went golden brown, but I'd say roughly 20 minutes, 25 minutes at around 180 to 200 degrees Celsius. And then when they were done, I just put them in this little jar. How cute is that? And that's my tasty pumpkin seed snack, oh yeah. Alrighty, so onto the pumpkin puree. So this is pretty crucial for most of the recipes uh, going forward. So I just steamed the pumpkin flesh until it went really mushy and just mashed it up. I'll set that aside and let it cool, et voila. All right, pumpkin stock. This is super simple. So here I've got some frozen vegetable ends, which I keep in the freezer um, and then just use them to make stock. So I put them in the boiling water, then added a sprinkle of salt and the stringy bits from the pumpkin and some peppercorns and gave it a quick stir. So 
So I just pop the lid on my cauldron, so on theme, and let it simmer away for about an hour, and then strained it, and I got myself some vegetable stock made with pumpkin strings. Pumpkin cider beast, guys, really intrigued to give this a go. So I just melted some butter in a pan with some flour and then stirred it together with some milk until it became like a sort of thickish, creamy sauce. Then I added in the pumpkin puree that we made earlier, that cooled down nicely. And then once all that stirred in, I added two cups of organic cider. This one's from Dalesford. So I slowly poured that in whilst stirring so that it wouldn't curdle. A pinch of salt, a dash of pepper, another quick stir, and then I had a little taste. And it was really yummy, so I had that for lunch, and I sprinkled it with some of the roasted pumpkin seeds too. Oh yeah. Pumpkin pie, all right. Oh, I love pumpkin pie. I added a cup of whole wheat flour. This one I got from a place in Hackney that does organic flour. And then a cup of spelt flour. This is organic white, I mean, I kind of just use whatever flowers I have in my cupboard. And to the flour I added some butter and then I was ready to crumble. That's right, I'm making it into a breadcrumb texture. What a pro. And then I added some cold water to that and mixed it around until it became a sort of dough, I guess you could say. And then I just rolled that out onto a pre-dusted chopping board like I've done there. So this is my first attempt at trying to get it into the pie dish and yeah. It was, I mean, epic fail. So we're gonna start that again, but it's okay. I just squashed it up, rolled it out again, and the second time it worked. Now I quite like a rustic looking pie, so please don't judge the fact that I didn't trim the uh, pie crust edges. So I just pricked the base with a knife to let the steam out, and then I popped it in the oven to let it pre-bake, blind bake, you know what I mean. Basically crispen up a little bit. I just wanna avoid a soggy bottom, basically. All right, for the pie filling, I've got two eggs, and then I found some blackstrap molasses in our cupboard. I thought, hey, I'll use that. Pure blackstrap. And then I've also got some sugar. That's kind of a combo of whichever sugars I've bought in bulk, and some salt, and then these old favorites found at the back of the cupboard. So I've got some ginger, nutmeg, and ground cloves. Um, I'm just using those up, and also some cinnamon as well. I really like Steenbergs because they all come in little glass jars, which I reuse quite a lot. And then of course the pumpkin puree, which I made earlier. The zest of a lemon. I also needed some evaporated milk. I didn't have any, but I decided to make my own by pouring kind of just over double the amount that I needed of milk for the recipe, and then letting it simmer away until it reduced by about 60%, and that is how you make evaporated milk from milk. Everything basically goes into this bowl. If you feel like you want to give any of these recipes a go, by the way, that's awesome. I'm going to put a link in the description box below to the recipes and that'll have all the right quantities and measurements and stuff. So um, you can find that there. Okay, where was I? So then I stirred it all up, added in the pumpkin puree, gave it another stir, added in the cooled down evaporated milk because I didn't want that to scramble the eggs, so I let it cool. And then I poured that into my pre-baked pie crust. So I popped my pumpkin pie into a preheated oven, I think it was at around 200 degrees Celsius roughly, and that sat in there for about an hour to maybe an hour and 15 minutes. I just kept an eye on it. And voila, look at that. So that is my pumpkin pie looking all rustic, and that is a pretty sexy slice of pie. All right, up next we've got a pumpkin snack. I thought I would try and be a little experimental. I put the pumpkin skins into a dish with some coconut oil and salt and then roasted them in the oven for around sort of 20 minutes roughly. I just kept an eye on them and they were actually really delicious. I would definitely make those again. Mm. And finally, a pumpkin face mask. Yeah, it's time to pamper myself after all that cooking. So I saved some of the pumpkin puree, that was the last of it actually. And then I mixed that with some honey and also some porridge oats and some raw organic coconut oil. So I just mixed all of that together and then massaged that onto my face after my bath and you've gotta let it sit on there for about 15 minutes. I think this is the perfect time to answer the door to trick or treaters because how great is that? You don't even need to put a costume on. You look scary enough. And then I used a little organic face cloth to wipe it all off and my skin actually felt really soft. Oh, and you've got to see my carved pumpkins. Look at those guys, they're so happy. Uh, so that's the one with the stars at the back as well. That kind of came out really well and was a great way of getting extra flesh out of the pumpkin. So there. 
there you go guys, I really hope you enjoy seeing what I did with my pumpkin, maybe you feel inspired, or maybe you've just been scared. Sorry about that. I'd love to know what you plan on making with your pumpkin flesh and seeds, etc. If you've got any ideas, put them in the comments and get sharing. It can be tricky to use the whole thing and I will probably end up composting the outer shell. So the worms might actually be quite happy with this little seasonal offering or it might scare the shit out of them, which is kind of what I want because I need them to make compost anyway, so it's win-win, win-win. I'll put any links to the uh, recipes, if we can call them that, <laughs> in the description box below, as well as any info about pumpkins and pumpkin waste, etc. because that's always fun to read. If you've enjoyed this video, then please hit that thumbs up. Go on it! And consider subscribing. That would be so awesome if you did. And have a very happy Halloween. Sorry, I'm really not sure what happened to my voice there. Whew. But because I'm not into wasting a lot of stuff, um, I was going to say because I'm not into getting wasted, which is also accurate, but not what this video is about. <laughs>